Did you ever imagine a really useful or exciting object that could change the world? Or perhaps you've dreamt of being a mad inventor? Finding solutions for everyday problems. Or else perhaps you're like these people who invented a bunch of basically useless nonsense and made you rich anyways. From the absolute worst pet that has ever existed to an app that breaks wind, here are 20 weird inventions that made people extremely rich. Number 20. Wacky Wall Walker. Back in the 1980s, we young people were simpletons. It was sufficient entertainment to stand in a river with a net and a jam jar catching tiddlers all summer long, so when they invented this toy, it literally blew our minds. Yes, they were simpler times, and we were much more easily entertained than all the screen-addled minded children of today, so when the wacky wall walker would be released in 1983, Children all over the world were surprisingly excited about it. This toy is basically a sort of spider-shaped sticky thing that's molded out of rubber, and the general idea was that it would be thrown against the wall, much to the delight of the parents who had just redecorated, no doubt, and would then walk down the said wall. Thrilling stuff! The thing that really got the fad underway for this particular toy was the clever marketing. When they were featured in an article in the Washington Post, the trend really took off on a massive scale. It must have been a very slow news week, I guess. That story would create a hype around this newfangled toy, and suddenly everyone wanted to get their sticky mitts on their very own wacky wall walker. People in Washington lost their minds and dashed out to buy them all up, and during the height of their popularity, about 240 million units of the toy would be sold, which is estimated to have brought in around $80 million. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Get your mind out of the gutter, please, because this is actually a robot that was created to simulate human speech. That is, a mouth. The woman behind the invention is allegedly a Japanese scientist who's chosen to remain anonymous. This invention made her a millionaire. The idea of being able to recreate human speech patterns artificially has long been a puzzle for scientists and robotics nerds. Accurately mimicking anything a human does from movement to speech is really, really difficult and remains a puzzle that engineers are constantly trying to figure out. So if this is real and not in fact utter hogwash, then this woman may be very wealthy indeed for this invention. Or maybe not. What do you think? As always, be sure to comment down below using the hashtag fancy topic and let me know all of your crazy thoughts. Number 19. Furby. Even if you're not as old as the hills, you may as well remember the Furby. These slightly obnoxious electronic robotic toys would first be released by the American company Tiger Electronics in 1998, and they too were considered the so-called must-have toy of the holiday season that year. In fact, there were often times and places that they sold out and couldn't be obtained for love nor money. I know it's crazy, but it's true. The Furby is a kind of weird, round, furry hamster owl alien robot with wiggly eyes and an ability to talk. It seemed to be the most wished for feature, and they had cleverly designed these toys to talk to each other, which meant that they could flog people more than one. Ooh, how sneaky. When they were first purchased, these toys began only speaking Furbish. That's the language that's spoken by the Furby. but they had been programmed to begin speaking English words and phrases gradually, as if they were actually learning the English, or indeed any one of the other 24 languages that these toys were also sold in. Over the course of 1998, 1 1.8 million units of these things would fly off the shelves, and this has only continued to increase over the next couple of years. By the time they hit the three-year mark, 40 million Furbies 
had been sold since their launch. Then they had a relaunch in 2005 with a bunch of upgrades, and those were sold until 2007. Then in 2012, they were relaunched again for the holiday season, but this time with all the important mobile junk. Literally nothing in recent times can be sold without an accompanying screen-based activity, otherwise how the heck would anyone know what to do with it? Number 18. Tamagotchi Next up, we have the ubiquitous and inexplicably popular Tamagotchi. These pets, without any of the fun parts that real-life pets have, were one of the massive fads of the late 1990s and early 2000s. In fact, so many of these wretched things have been sold that it seems entirely plausible that Tamagotchis are solely responsible for all the plastic pollution that we've been lumbered with. Of course I'm being silly, but a staggering 83 million of these things have been sold worldwide and counting. The handheld digital pet that was almost impossible to keep alive and seemed to be more demanding and fragile than any newborn baby that's ever been created in Japan was released in 1996. The general idea is that the egg-shaped plastic thing with a screen and three buttons contained your virtual pet, which required you, the owner, to feed and play with it and then clean up the poop of your chosen animal. And they did poop a lot. The playing that they did was accompanied by a few digital hearts as if they were actually enjoying it, and basically if you didn't feed them exactly on time, they were probably going to die. Then they would have a miniature gravestone, and it was all very very dramatic, until you reset the thing and then lo and behold, your pet was miraculously alive again, as though you were a digital Jesus. Is this the worst toy ever? Well, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Number 17. Plastic Wishbone well, it does take all sorts now, doesn't it? The slightly bizarre and tiny bit creepy tradition that we all have of snapping the wishbone of the dead bird that we've just ceremoniously cooked and eaten in order to make a wish does limit the fun to just two participants. That much is true. But would you just think about the strange nature of the practice to begin with for a minute? I never really considered it before, but it is kind of odd when you really get to thinking about it. Anyways, one guy was allegedly so super super sad that only two people at the table got the chance to make a wish in the dead bird ritual that he saw it as an opportunity to make a whole bunch of money. It's funny how that happens, right? The guy, who goes by the name of Ken Aroni, his parents missed a trick there. He could have been called Mac. Well, anyways, he was slightly distraught by the injustice of the turkey having just one wishbone, so he designed a fake wishbone so that everyone can enjoy making a wish. Even the vegetarians, apparently, because bone snapping is one of the things that those who forgo the meats really miss the most in their lives. Aroni Tony set up the company, Lucky Break, and went about manufacturing thousands of these plastic bones every day. He allegedly rakes in over two and a half million dollars every year, and presumably has granted more wishes than any genie would ever imagine. Number 16. Snuggies Basically, it's like a backwards bathrobe, right? The Snuggie was marketed as a sleeved blanket and was especially well received because of its cheesy television commercials. People apparently were really into those things, and tens of millions of the things have been sold. Back in late 2008, the Snuggie brand of sleeved blanket suddenly became a pop culture phenomenon. People actually went nuts for these things, as if everyone suddenly lived in extremely cold homes and needed to swathe themselves in nylon lest they freeze to death. These things began to turn up everywhere, and they were lauded on television like the Today Show, where everyone put the ridiculous items on, the full cast and crew, and the enthusiasm for them was unbounded and completely inexplicable. Now, originally these things sold for $14.95 each, and then in a special offer you could actually get two of them for $19.95, presumably so you could sit next to somebody else who looked as ludicrous as you did. People began wearing them in public, on purpose, no less, and pub crawls were even organized which had the slanket as a dress code. And then society as a whole crumbled into the ground, and now we're left with it today. The end. Number 15. Pet Rock 
It seems as though people have always been pretty dumb. Even back in 1975, you could sell them any old junk, and they would willingly line up to be able to have their hard-earned money extracted in return for the latest snake oil. The fad back then was pet rocks, and yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. The so-called collectible toy was in fact a rock from the city of somewhere in Baja, California in Mexico. It came with googly eyes, a carry case, and a 32-page instruction manual. 32 pages for a rock. You know, a stone, a pebble. These toys were the brainchild of one Gary Dahl, an advertising executive, surprise, surprise, who presumably took up a bet. And that bet said that he couldn't sell rocks to people who were as dumb as rocks. It turns out, though, that he could, because this ridiculous fad lasted about six months, and he sold over one million of the things at $4 each, and thus it made him a millionaire. Number 14. Koosh Ball These balls are made of rubber filaments with a steel-bound core which was designed, or so the story goes, for the designer's children to make it easier for them to catch a ball. And then things only expanded from there. The Koosh Ball was patented in 1987, and the range soon grew to include a bunch of other Koosh-related products, which included yo-yos, key rings, and even a baseball set. The Koosh itself is made up of around 2,000 of these natural rubber strands and has been available in every color combination you could imagine during its existence. At one point, the craze for these things was so great that Archie Comics even made a comic book miniseries called Kooshkins, in which the balls appeared with cartoon hands and faces. Since 2017, the Koosh ball has been manufactured by Hasbro and has recently been expanding its range yet again. It now includes a a kind of blaster gun that's similar to a Nerf gun and has had crossover promotional merchandise with Angry Birds. The fun just seems to never end for this one. Number 13. Slinky. The iconic Slinky toy would first be produced in 1945 when giving a kid a big metal spring that made their hands smell funny and taste like pennies was at the height of modern fun. It no doubt had those baby boomer children leaping with joy for the entire standard 30 minutes that they would get before their spring would end up in a kink or become victim of an over-exuberant sibling stretching idea. The Slinky is a pre-compressed spring toy which was invented by a man named Richard James. It's a alleged uh, to be able to perform a series of different tricks, presumably just before it gets tangled into an irredeemable mess and then discarded forever like every other slinky that's gone before it. Anyways, we know that it can travel down a flight of stairs by the power of gravity, and the thrills just never end. But it can also apparently levitate for a brief moment before it's dropped. And whether it is nostalgia or collective madness, the Slinky does continue to sell in its home country of the United States and in many other places worldwide. About 300 million of these things have been sold ever since it was created. Number 12. The Magic 8-Ball now, you know what this one is, the plastic sphere that's designed to look a bit like a gigantic eight ball that professes to be able to predict your future. Well, that's all very spooky indeed, but how many times did you ask a magic eight ball a question only to have it come back with ask again later repeatedly? So frustrating. This ball has an attitude problem, and frankly, its work ethic is quite questionable. The magic eight ball would be invented by a couple of guys named Albert C. Carter and Abe Book all the way back in 1946, the general idea being that the user would ask the ball a yes or no sort of question and then turn the sphere over to reveal the answer in the little window underneath the ball. This was originally sold as a paperweight, but eventually took off as an office toy and then a children's toy when it was marketed directly to them from 1971 onwards. The ball contains a total of 20 possible answers, 10 of which are affirmative, 9 are non-committal, and the remaining five just simply negative. I don't know about you, but I think my Magic 8 Ball was an absolute jerk. And despite the general uselessness of the item, it's remained popular ever since and is still manufactured by Mattel today. Oh, and fun fact, you're not supposed to shake it. You're just supposed to turn it over. Number 11. 
Pillow Pets well, pardon me, but what the actual chuff is this and why is it a thing? Pillow pets, well, they're apparently a brand of stuffed toy that has Velcro straps allowing the thing to change from a cushion into a cuddly toy and vice versa. Oh, such fun. I imagine that children want nothing more than to turn a beloved friend inside out and enjoy a decorative pillow instead of a snuggly puppy named Patches. The company went all out on the television advertising, which included such wildly imaginative slogans as, it's a pillow, it's a pet, it's a pillow pet. Yes, they pulled out all the stops on that one, I'm sure. Beyond the incomprehensible nature of the popularity of such items, there are the cold hard figures, and the profits don't lie. They've actually raked in millions since their creation, and the company is even seeking damages in lawsuits with other companies who have been producing counterfeit pillow-based stuffed animals. Oh, the cheek of it. Number 10. I Fart App even the classic whoopee cushion is no longer safe from getting a digital upgrade. This invention, by a man named Joel Kamm, who may have remained firmly mentally in the sixth grade, it's hard to say, is the modern day whoopee cushion and is making faces red and teachers furious all over the world. In fact, this particular app has been so popular that it actually made $10,000 in one single day. I mean, come on, farts are funny, but how many people need an app for that? Actually, for a while, even Apple didn't believe that people needed the particular app, and they had rejected a similar one called Pull My Finger. <laughs> Hilarious. All on the grounds that it didn't meet App Store requirements. Yet not long after they allowed the iFart app into their store and released a whole lot of uptight ideas along with all that wind, there you go. The pinnacle of human technological achievement in the internet, and we find a way to make it fart. Number 9. Slap Bracelet Back in the 80s, you were nobody. That was unless your wrist was red raw from the constant slapping and re-slapping of a slap bracelet. People went nuts for these things, and they sold by the truckload. It was a more simple time, and we were all delirious from the sheer excitement of it all. Probably all that Super Mario and the threat of nuclear annihilation, I would think. Anyways, here they are, a layered, flexible stainless steel band that's sealed inside fabric or silicone. Starts out straight until it's slapped, with quite some force, I should add, onto one's wrist, at which point it curls itself around said wrist and then transforms into a bracelet. Until the wearer feels compelled to take it off, straight it out with a satisfying click at each end and then repeat the process of slapping, curling, and straightening again, much to the irritation of adults everywhere. This popular fad first appeared in 1983 but hung around for the rest of the decade up until about 1990 where everyone freaked out as the stories began to emerge of injuries that were caused by the bands. These obviously developed into much bigger injuries, you know, gushing blood and severed limbs and all the fun stuff, but really the design was so easy to copy and so cheap to reproduce that a bunch of shoddily made knockoffs appeared on the market and fell apart easily causing cuts and abrasions, as you may expect. Apparently they still make the things, and yet again, as recently as 2018, there was a product recall as the fabric was easily pierced by the metal that was inside and had been out there lacerating children all over the place, which I'm sure you're aware of is not cool at all. Number 8. Billy Bob Teeth this is a concept that actually boggles my mind. This guy apparently made millions of dollars selling a pair of goofy false teeth. I mean, what the actual heck? It turns out that somehow this guy and his friend came up with these rather offensively named teeth and then went out and began flogging them around in bars and university campuses. They went about the way of selling it in a really aggressive fashion, but for some reason, I can't imagine that it even could have been in both bars and colleges. People really seem to want to buy these pieces of plastic rubbish ever since 1998 when they first created them and they've gotten more and more wealthy from all this nonsense. Now they sell between half a million and a million sets of these false teeth every year and they've expanded their range to include 40 different wonky tooth designs. They are millionaires, all from selling people the ability to wear bad dental work. Number 7. Head On 
Now for a little snake oil to soothe what ails you. Yes, this is one heck of a scam that somehow managed to go viral, get enormous amounts of attention, and sell by the truckload, despite having no legitimate medical basis for its claims. Head On is a brand name for a topical treatment which claims to relieve headaches, except that it contains literally no active ingredients and is made essentially of wax and little else. Right then. <laughs> so the origin of this nonsense seems to be a dreadful and notorious commercial from 2006, which the line, head on, applied directly to the forehead, would be repeated over and over, thus giving it a kind of cult status, despite the fact that the product being sold was absolute hooey. The adverts themselves avoided getting sued for misleading the consumer, as they only ever stated their absurd tagline, and never actually claimed what the purpose of the product was although it was implied, but no factual claims were ever made. So, ta-da! It's like it never even mattered that it was all a bunch of nonsense. Number 6. Beanie Babies now, come on, admit it. How many of you still have one or maybe even a bunch of these useless floppy soft toys lurking somewhere in your possessions? Perhaps you still have the tags on them as well. And perhaps you even have those little tag protectors on the tags that keep your investment safe. The guy behind this brand of silliness was one Ty Warner. His concept was to make a sack fill it with beans, give it some ears and a name, and then sell the heck out of it. All with the promise of limited editions becoming extremely collectible and therefore incredibly valuable. All the stuff in order to create a stampede to the shops and a mad rush to purchase the rarest of these toys. They became the massive fad and grew an army of dedicated collectors during the second half of the 1990s, and there is apparently a high resale value for just a very few of these toys, but really, how many do you have and how long are you going to keep waiting on them to become valuable? The real value of these things was to the guy who came up with them and then sold the living daylights out of the nonsense until he got filthy rich. Number 5. Doggles now, if you don't enjoy seeing a dog wear a pair of goggles, then I don't really know what to say. You're probably no friend of mine. Here, we have a selection of pooches sporting hilarious doggles, and frankly, they do look amazing. There's no way not to enjoy this, so let's all kick back a moment and just watch the wonder of the doggle in its full and absolute glory. These goggles are specifically designed to be worn by those identifying as canine. They're designed and manufactured to fit the shape of a dog's head, and although they're marketed and sold as a fashion item, come on now, dogs do deserve to look pretty too. They can also be fitted with prescription lenses for dogs who have vision impairment. What's not to love about this madness? And why haven't I seen all dogs wearing them? They've been used to great effect by working dogs in the US military in order to protect their eyes from sand and dust while they were in Afghanistan and Iraq, but they've also been employed to protect eyes of dogs with various medical complaints and eye conditions as well as adding dapper additions to any outfit. Number 4. The Floby. The Floby is a vacuum cleaner attachment designed to cut hair. It sounds kind of bananas, but this is a bona fide thing that actually exists in the world. It's just like the Wayne's World version of this especially silly sounding item, except that this one is real and genuinely has sold millions of units. However, it doesn't have quite the great tagline of it sucks as it cuts. Developed and patented in 1986 in California, the Floby was out on the market from 1988 onwards. The bizarre product could mainly be found on late night infomercials, presumably where it attracted the attention of stoned student types who wanted the convenience of a home haircut system. It would be advertised as being able to perform hundreds of precision layered cuts, which is quite the claim for a Hoover attachment. Funnily enough, due to the tidying up effect of the suction part of the device, these sorts of machines are actually used by astronauts while they're in space. I know, I never thought about them getting haircuts either, but hair keeps on growing even if you're at zero gravity, apparently. Despite the silliness of the machine, it sold more than 2 million units in its time and also has special attachments for dog grooming stuff. Honestly, I'm not even making this up. Number 3. The Million Dollar Homepage 
A cash-strap student from Wiltshire in the UK would be trying to raise funds for his university education when he came up with an idea for the Million Dollar Homepage. This would be all the way back in 2005 when people could hardly even conceive what the internet was, let alone what it would become, and they were still in that honeymoon phase of trying to figure out the new and weird stuff for fun before getting into the habit of standard missionary forevermore. So, that's how this kid would conceive a load of people to give him money. And what did they get in return? Well, a pixel. That's right, one single pixel. The homepage is arranged in a grid of 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. Purchasers of said pixels could buy them at a cost of $1 each, and then they'd be sold in blocks of 10 by 10. Are you still here? Is that too much math? I nodded off a tiny bit during the math part myself. Anyways, included with their pixels, the purchasers could then display teeny weeny images on them and a link and a slogan would be displayed when someone hovered over them with a computer's cursor. So there you have it, a million dollars for flogging pixels, not even pixies. That would have been a lot more interesting indeed. Number 2. ICanHasCheeseburger.com so, ICanHasCheeseburger.com, apart from being a very silly thing to say, is basically just a monetized blog kind of website. But the guy that created it got in ahead of the curve before every Tom, Dick, and Harry had figured out how to make all that sweet internet-y moolah. Eric Nagagawa says that he got the idea for the website when he posted an image of a cat that was smiling. The internet has literally always been about cats, and almost nothing else, you know. And he added a hilarious caption that said, I can has cheeseburger above happy cat and that's when the whole internet lapped it up the nonsense website became so popular at its peak that it was getting around one and a half million hits per day this was very profitable since the website had made money by selling advertising and licensing fees as well as flogging a whole truckload of merch with all that happy cat shenanigans splashed all over it Within seven months, a bunch of investors had saw that it was a good place to make a profit, and that's when they bought the website for $2 million. Number 1. The Trunky Back in 2006, a person who thought that what parents traveling with children really needed was an additional piece of luggage to concern them while they're trying to navigate through a hectic airport. Oh, and the situation would be hugely improved if the small child could ride on that suitcase. That's right, that's what the world needs. A lot more novelty plastic suitcases and children demanding that they ride on them. Deep, deep joy. Anyway, the thing seemed to be a good idea at the time, and was even featured on the TV show Dragon's Den, which is the UK equivalent of Shark Tank, and a whole bunch of rich, clueless individuals would praise the heck out of it. The Trunky was priced at around $50, which is absurd for a piece of absolute trash, but it did sell for the millions. Pardon my cynicism, but have you ever lugged children and essential baggage through a busy and hot airport? If you have, you might be familiar with the very special sensation of dread that that experience can engender. What a riot that was! Did you even know that there were so many silly things out there or that people seem to just love buying them? And have you got any interesting or, for that matter, ridiculous ideas for an invention? Let me know all about them down there in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.